identical isolated small conducting spheres 1 and 2 are distance d apart. Initially, sphere 1 has a net charge of negative q, sphere 2 has a net charge of positive 4q, and the electric attractive force between the two is F0. Then sphere 2 is moved by its insulating stand to touch sphere 1 and then put back to its initial position. Find the electric force between the two spheres now. When the two spheres touch, part of the positive charges cancel with the negative charges. Because the charges are conserved, the net charge on the two spheres combined should stay the same. So negative Q plus positive 4Q. The total charge after they touch should still be the same positive 3Q. Because the two spheres are identical, they would share the final charges evenly. So each sphere ends with positive 3Q divided by 2. So that's the amount of charge each sphere ends with. Positive 3 halves Q and the positive 3 halves Q. Now let's find the electric force between the two charges. We're going to treat these two charges like they're point charges. So we can ignore the induced charge separation. And to find the force between two point charges, we use the Coulomb's law. K Q1 Q2 over R squared. The K is always a constant. And in this case, the distance also stays the same. So the force is proportional to Q1 times Q2. When I use Coulomb's law to find the electric force between two point charges, I do not plug in the signs. I only use this equation to find the magnitude of the force. So I don't plug in negative Q times positive 4Q. I just plug in Q times 4Q so I can get the magnitude of the force. Because if I plug in the signs, let's say one of these two charges is a negative, so I get a negative force. All that can tell me is that this force must be an attractive force. But it doesn't tell me any details about the direction because if these two attract each other, the attractive force on this charge will be to the right. The attractive force on that charge will be to the left. So I still have to look at the picture for direction. Therefore, it's just more convenient for me to plug in the charges without the signs so I get the magnitude of the force and then use the picture to tell the direction of the force. So let's see. Q1 times Q2 used to be 1Q times 4Q, so it's 4Q squared. At the end, it is 3 half Q times 3 half Q, which means it's 9 fourths Q squared. So the factor by which Q1 times Q2 changes is the new value divided by the old value. The Q squared cancels, so I can just do 9 fourths divided by 4, which is 9 divided by 16. So the Q1 times Q2 changes by a factor of 9 sixteenths. That means the force changes by the same factor. The force used to be FO and the new value is the old value times the factor by which it changes. So that's the new force. And of course because at the end they both carry positive charges, this will be a repulsive force. By the way, when you see problems like this, the two conducting spheres will always be identical. Because if they are not identical, they will not share the final charges evenly. And it is not an easy task to figure out how much charge each sphere gets. So I don't think you will see this type of problem involving different size spheres.